Minasan, Konnichiwa. Watashi wa Blair Reeve to Moshimas. Yoroshiku Anagashimas. New Zealand or De Soldata Watashi no Jonetsu no Hitotsu wa Suneni Gengo des. Koriwa began from a young language, and I remember in high school how much I enjoyed panel analyzing poetry in prize detail, especially the poem An Irish Airman for Caesar's Death by W.B. Yeats which I wrote about, wrote about, every year, every year, in my last three years, in my three last years of school, trying to explain in finer and fine, fine and fine, finer detail what made this poem tick. And so I'm going to recite that for you now. An Irish airman for Caesar's death. I know that I shall meet my fate somewhere among the clouds above. Those that I fight, I do not hate. Those that I guard, I do not love. My country is Kiltartan Cross. My country, men, Kiltartan's poor. No likely end could bring them loss or leave them happier than before. Nor law, nor duty bade me fight, nor public men, nor cheering crowds. A lonely impulse of delight drove to this tumult in the clouds. I balanced all, brought all to mind, the years to come seemed a waste of breath, a waste of breath, the years behind, in balance with this life, this death. In 1995, I joined a weekly poetry meetup and began writing performance poetry. Does anybody know what I mean by performance poetry? Well, it's poetry that's been written for the express purpose of being read aloud not simply read aloud from the page, so much as being perforate matate dormormed or recisi reitited in an exhaustive, exhalative, unrepressive and pressing way. And it involves the memorization of poetry, and I guess it's a bit like acting. I found that by poeticizing my recitals, uh, regardless of whether it was written for the page or performance voice aloud, that I was able to make eye on eye contact I see you, see me, with the audience. And I found that pretty much everyone listened and paid more attention when you were performing, unlike when someone reads the words off the lifeless flatness of paper. They, poetry, written voice. And of course, I agree that. When you study poetry, you learn about all these different sound devices. Yet so much of poetry is studied as a written form and read as a written form which is crazy given that poets hear voices when they write. Oh, do we? <laughs> what voices? Whose voices do we hear, Blair? So really, when you study poetry, reading aloud should be a big part of the curriculum because that's where the power of poetry truly lies. And secondly, is there not something performative about spoken language that doesn't exist in the written form? By this, I mean saying something out loud is an action, an enactment. To say the utterance is to make it happen. So for several years, uh, I wrote performance poetry. I was heading in a certain direction by the year 1999, but it was a very uncertain, uncertain, which way, where are we, what comes next direction, where I had begun mixing up my words and syllables and experimenting with sound. And I was beginning to treat language as a substance that could be molded and shouldered and blade bent shape made at my will and not restricted to normal, formal, boring patterns of syntax, word order and word structure. But it was quite ex pental and I was unsure of myself. And I was too caught up in the content of what I was saying such that I could not see a way forward beyond what I had done at that point in time. Over here, this is the way forward. This future, this enactment, this is the way forward. You're on the other side of the door, Blair, at 30. Sa, sorry there, watashi tachi wa nana nenkan saki o kurishite. Watashi ga nana nenkan nano shita no ka sozo dekimasu ka? So desu ne, nihongo wa benkyo shimashita. Nihongo ni taihen kyomi o motte, toke ni kakikoto to yomikoto mo takusan no jikan o shite, dakara shi o amari kakimasen deshita. So now we jump forward seven years. You want to know what I did for seven years? I went to Japan and I studied Japanese. I became fascinated by the Japanese language and I poured all my gambate for poetry into learning to read and write Japanese. All my seppuku for language was taken up in Nihongo. 
You'd need a bongo player's visa to rhyme Hisa with Nihongo, but if you kneel on Japanese, I say it can be rhymed with ease. Imagine you're a taiko drummer landing in Japan to find that your visa's been declined would be an arrhythmic bummer. So, then I began studying poetry and literature as an academic discipline, and this opened up my mind to critical thinking about the meaning of art and writing. This is a good thing because it informs and affects your poetry by teaching you to think more circumlaterally about how we find meaning in art. Finding meaning in something is an interactional, spectacular, interrogative discipline that requires you to think about a topic in a critical way and then respond to it with indispropriate or extra compassionate ticks and clucks of the tongue. And those click tocks can be critical prose or it can be creative writing, or it might combine the two to the the ooth tooth. So now we've arrived at poetry with a capital PO. And this is where I think meaning is truly played out in the spoken word arena, because poets are most effective when they convey their words with vocal conviction. How does the poem come across? How sincerely are the poets reading their work? Do we trust the poets? Do we feel the impact of their poetry? Now I'd like to backtrack and sidestep a little to the first mention of reading poetry aloud. So far I've written on the assumption that we're talking about a poet reading his or her own poetry aloud, but that's only one subset of the topic of performance poetry. Reading, recital, memorization, these are all useful skills for not only understanding poetry, but also having fun while doing it. Remember what I said about how saying something makes it so? Reading aloud makes poetry an active art form with a formerly passive reading receptacle now has to activate participationly. The Argentinian writer Jorge Luis Borges often said that a line of Shakespeare read aloud in a contemporary setting means that the reader is Shakespeare during the utterance. For me, it's more about revisiting the revolution of the poem over and over, because poems are ambiguous. But reading them aloud, mental any teeny mini my mit nine times, is a way of bringing you to a point of being able to take a stance on the poem, interpret it, and then recite it in a way that conveys your understanding. I say this because it would be near impossible to recite an old poem in the exact same way that the writer might have intended. And an important distinction here is that the writer's reading is not the only way to read a poem because it's an act of interpretation for the writer as it is for any reader. And that's why I mentioned that quote from Borges about readers becoming Shakespeare when they read him aloud. So how can I convey the pleasure of reciting society writing others party poetry? Well, here's a poem by Richard Reeve, who I knew in New Zealand many years ago and who has published at least five books of powerful and demanding verse. This poem, An Opening, comes from Richard's second collection, The Life in the Dark. I wanted to get deeper inside this poem via memorization. That enables me to find a way to sink into it and then to convey that sinking feeling to you as best I can. Of course, it's still poetry, so the specific takeaway is never an explicit one. The voice is both a subtle instrument as well as a blunt one, and both come into play with every reading. An opening. In search of some last hope, some reason to forgive this beast, conniving ape in whom the poems live, I memorize your voice, the vigil of your tongue, against the crushing vice that shuts over being, against this lust to wage the fruitlessness of life, invoke the brute language to put to use his hoof. I memorize your voice, the first words tune. That is the world's preface, the silence of the moon. So memorizing someone else's poem and then reciting it with conviction is an act of love. First, you have to find something compelling about the poem, and then you memorize and rehearse it, and then you fall in love with it, and the next thing you know, you want, to, um, you want to share it. You want to find an outlet where you can present it to an audience, uh, one who you hope will respond to your deeper intention, and providing you read it true, appreciate your interpretation, 
while remembering, of course, that uh, 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 the exact meaning is never set in stone. So um, I'm going to finish. Thank you so much.